Number 9. Incident in Houston In September of 2019, Lachelle Hudgens had just arrived at her apartment complex in southwest Houston when she was approached by a group of five men. She tried rolling up her windows, but one of the men reached into her vehicle through the passenger window and tried to grab her purse. Looking back on the incident, Hudgens remembered that she couldn't do anything except scream. The robber told her to keep quiet, but before he could pull the purse away from her, Hudgens reached inside and grabbed her gun. She fired two shots, wounded in the suspect and causing the others in his group to flee. The man she'd shot, whose identity wasn't released, was later found on the other side of the apartment complex. He underwent surgery for his injuries and faced charges of aggravated robbery. Number 8. Guillermo Medrano Sandoval In April of 2019, a Colorado man was arrested and charged with murder after shooting a rifle at two suspected carjackers. 24-year-old Bryce Fitch took his dogs outside his Denver home at around 4 a.m. when he saw a man and a woman trying to break into his truck. It was at that point that Fitch retrieved an AR-15 variant from his home. As he came out, the pair got into their own vehicle and started driving towards him with the front door still open. According to Fitch, he fell over and the firearm discharged. The car stopped further down the road, at which point Fitch fired two more shots at his occupants, one of which shattered the rear window, as he was reportedly afraid they'd come back to harm him. Later in the day, 26-year-old Guillermo Medrano Sandoval was found dead from a gunshot wound to the chest in a car in Aurora. The authorities connected the two cases and Fitch was arrested on first-degree murder charges. Colorado's Make My Day law, written and signed in 1985, was created to offer homeowners protection from intruders. They're allowed to use deadly force but only if their lives are threatened while inside the house. A homeowner cannot, however, shoot an intruder to protect their property. Fitch's trial is ongoing. Number 7. Brad LeBlanc on June the 30th of 2021, a 12-year-old boy from Louisiana fatally shot an armed invader who was threatening his mother. The victim's identities weren't released, but the intruder was reported as 32-year-old Brad LeBlanc. The incident took place near Clinton, where LeBlanc forced the boy's mother inside her home at gunpoint. The preteen, fearing for his mother's life, then grabbed a hunting rifle and shot LeBlanc, inflicting critical injuries to which he eventually succumbed in a local hospital. Two other suspects were arrested in connection to the robbery. One of them was Jonathan Barker, charged with second-degree murder as well as principal to aggravated burglary and principal to aggravated kidnapping, while the other accomplice, Jennifer Bond, was charged as an accessory after the fact. In the aftermath, the East Felicana Parish Sheriff described the 12-year-old as a hero for protecting his mother. According to the latest updates on the case, he wasn't charged in the shooting. Number 6. Andrea Miller On July the 22nd of 2014, Andrea Miller and her boyfriend Gus Polly Adams broke into the home of an elderly man in Long Beach, Southern California. When 80-year-old Tom Greer returned to his house, he found the couple, both in their late 20s, ransacking it. Greer would later tell the police that it was the fourth time his residence had been burglarized. Miller and Adams beat and threw Greer to the ground, inflicting bruises, cuts, and a broken collarbone. Nevertheless, the homeowner managed to retrieve a small-caliber handgun from his bedroom, causing the intruders to flee through the garage and into an alley. Miller reportedly yelled, Don't shoot me! I'm pregnant! I'm going to have a baby! Greer heard the woman's pleas and, by his own account, shot her anyway, twice in the back. When interviewed by the police, he claimed that he had no regrets about his actions as he'd done what he had to do. Miller died in the alley and the coroner would later report that she wasn't pregnant. Adams fled the scene but was subsequently arrested and charged with five felony counts, including one relating to Miller's death. In the aftermath, Greer was cleared of any wrongdoing as prosecutors concluded he'd exercised his legal and legitimate right of self-defense, while Adams was sentenced to 12 years in prison. Number 5. Antonio Leakes in September of 2016, a woman defended a home in Gwinnett County, Georgia, from three armed intruders, killing one of them in the process. 36-year-old Chinese-American woman Chen Fengju, a local restaurant manager, was staying with a housemate at a spring drive home when the incident occurred at around 4 a.m. 
three men forced their way into the residence, looking for cash and valuables. Chen initially tried alerting the police, but the call didn't go through. She then took her handgun, which was reportedly a gift from her husband, which she'd only used once before at a firing range. While still in her nightclothes and with the cell phone pressed to her ear, she engaged the burglars in a shootout. The men tried to return fire, but Chen was unwavering in her defense of the home and kept shooting at them, even as bullets were whizzing past her. One of the burglars, desperate to escape the home, ran through a glass pane. After emptying her clip, Chen calmly resumed her call with the authorities. None of the robbers were wearing masks, and one of them, identified as 28-year-old Antonio Leakes, died from his injuries in the home's driveway. It was determined that Chen had acted within her legal rights, and she wasn't prosecuted for the shooting. Footage of the incident from the home's security cameras became viral, amassing over 23 million views on the New York Daily News' YouTube channel alone. Number 4. Joshua Flanagan In January of 2021, while at home with friends in Fort Smith, Arkansas, 28-year-old Kelsey Dampier realized that her cell phone was missing. She was reported to have pulled a purple 38 caliber handgun and vowed to kill whoever had taken her property. Dampier used an app to track down the phone which led her to father of three, Joshua Flanagan. She found him at his home, a different Fort Smith address than the one from where her phone had been taken. An argument ensued through which Dampier reportedly realized that he had it. Flanagan had prior arrest for theft and burglary, while his brother, Richard, had been shot dead at a suspected drug house in 2020. In the argument, Dampier brandished her handgun and shot 37-year-old Flanagan in the stomach once before she calmly walked away. He was rushed to a local hospital where he was later pronounced dead. In the aftermath, a woman, who was a mother to one of Flanagan's children, argued that he could have bought the stolen phone from a third party and was ultimately blameless in the incident. It's unclear if Flanagan and Dampier knew each other. Witnesses picked the shooter's photo out of a lineup and she was arrested on first-degree murder charges. For the extreme act of vigilantism, she was given a prison sentence of 35 years. Number 3. Jose Antonio Reyes Bermudez In December of 2018, a man was shot outside a Miami Beach car wash as he was attempting to steal a luxury Mercedes SUV. Surveillance footage captured 48-year-old Stephen Lott running after his G-Wagon as it started to pull away. He opened fire and around fatally struck the accused thief, Jose Antonio Reyes Bermudez, in the head. It caused him to lose control of the vehicle, which flew across the street, crashing into a parked car and an office depot building. Due to its sheer size, the G-Wagon made a hole in the wall and struck power poles, which rescuers had to shut down before they could pull the driver out. Prosecutors chose not to pursue criminal charges against Lot for the fatal shooting as they were unable to prove that he wasn't afraid for his life at the time. When interviewed by police, Lot stated that Bermudez was trying to run him over. Moreover, the speed at which Bermudez attempted to make his escape in the G-Wagon made it a danger for other drivers and pedestrians. Bermudez was a career criminal with prior convictions for robbery, theft, and aggravated assault. Lot was deemed to have been within the limits of Florida's Stand Your Ground law. Passed in 2005, it allows citizens to react with deadly force if they believe their lives are in danger. While some reactions have been in support of the law, critics argue that it encourages vigilantism. Today's topic was requested by Airdron Aired and African Goggles. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Harold Runnels in February of 2021, 82-year-old Herbert Parrish and his wife, Lois, aged 79, heard a knock on the door of their South Carolina home. It was a man later identified as 61-year-old Harold Runnels, who told Lois that he was looking for a little white chihuahua. The woman replied that she hadn't seen the animal, but as she tried to close the door, Runnels burst inside, pulled out a large knife, and started attacking her and her husband. Looking back on the incident, Herbert remembered, I felt we're gone. He's going to kill us and take what he can take. Herbert, a Vietnam War veteran, decided to stand up to his attacker. He took a shotgun that he had hanging on a wall next to the door. He repeatedly struck Runnels in the face as hard as he could with the weapon's handle. Herbert would later tell a media outlet he believed he'd struck the intruder at least 10 times 
until he was unconscious. Both Herbert and Lois recovered from the injuries they sustained in the attack. Harold, who lived close to their home and whom they'd seen around the neighborhood, was taken to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. Number 1. Eric Hood In July of 2019, Eric Hood stole a Hyundai from outside a Philadelphia pizza shop as 54-year-old Hood drove off. Three children aged seven months, one and five were still in the car. Their 25-year-old mother had been visiting the father of two of the children who worked at the pizza shop. Their identities were not revealed by the authorities. Hood encountered traffic further down the road and the parents caught up with him at a red light. The father pulled Hood out of the car and started beating him. Others from the neighborhood joined in the attack and a mob formed that started kicking and stomping the carjacker into unconsciousness. He died in a hospital less than an hour after the initial car theft. Philadelphia Police Captain Jason Smith held a press conference in which he claimed that he wasn't a fan of street justice. The authorities reportedly had footage of the incident and launched an investigation to determine who'd attacked Hood with the children's parents potentially facing charges as well. Thanks for watching. If you found a wallet with $5,000 in cash and several bank cards, would you keep it or return it to the owner? Let us know in the comments section below.